Hello everyone, welcome back to our UI Fab Learning series. This is episode 2. And in this episode, I prefer to start with first a few confusing questions, which I have encountered at different times. And I'm sure that you would also encounter or probably you are chiming the similar questions in your mind. So let's figure it out or rather try to identify the answers for those questions first. So the left side, it talks about certain concurrent or coexisting UX technologies. And the front side is all about uh, our interest. And definitely it's an SAP provided. Followed by we have certain other traditional ways of web development like HTML5 certain uh, libraries like React.js as built by Facebook. We have Angular provided by Google, community built view, side by side certain server side rendering engines like EJS, Handlebar, Jetpack and so on. Obviously, uh, I have encountered such questions like uh, why you want to propose UI5 as a solution? Why not open UI5? Uh, we have traditional based HTML5 development approach. Uh, can't we go by that route? Even we have famous libraries, as I said, like React.js and Angular as a framework, uh, why you can't adopt those solutions. Even within SAP, we have SAP Y5, OpenUI5, uh, a Fury as well. So why not Fury? Why not Fury elements? Right? So the questions or list goes on. So let's first start with an uh, understanding the motivation for SAP to bring a separate technologies altogether. But we had some other UI web technologies at this moment. So SAP understood that whatever the solutions they had as an web solutions, uh, that was not enterprise ready. So what does it mean by enterprise ready? It means like it should be globalized. It should be highly secured. It should be themable. And most importantly, it should be, you know, backward compatible because SAP can't offer a solution to their customers, which they say like, maybe within a year or so, you can just have to sunset that uh, solutions because it's uh, it's not backward compatible. So obviously they had to think through it differently and they brought or rather started a project with a code name called Phoenix in 2009. Initially it was not as an open source, but there was a, a kind of a drive from community uh, who wanted to have SAP should offer this as an open source solution. So you can see there is a wonderful blog post written in 2013 all the way, uh, which says like 13 reasons why SAP should make this project as an open source. So obviously, uh, there are uh, various reasons he highlighted. And one of the things is like, uh, this library should be uh, available for other uh, outside of the SAP ecosystem, so that other developers can also uh, use this uh, library in their web development, they can put their experiences and they can contribute more on this library if they want. Side by side, if any issues uh, been highlighted, uh, that can be also, you know, uh, can be fixed by the community contributors. And uh, it is also legally possible because other different companies, right? So like Angular, uh, so Google and maybe Twitter, they have made the bootstrap free uh, for usage. So then why SAP can't? Because SAP themselves also using lots of open source libraries for them. So why as a, as a favor, they should also return back uh, to the community as an open source. So that was the reason uh, SAP started uh, this one in 2013. Uh, it's been raised with this uh, arch and uh, SAP made it an open UI5. But the irony is SAP has to pay their employees too, right? So SAP cannot make everything free. So what they did, so they basically wrapped uh, on top of the open UI5 and added lots of exotic controls, smart controls, a lot of things. And they, you know, created something called SAP UI5. And, and from 2013, that's, that's the change it happened. So now obvious question would be, what are the basic difference between SAP UI5 and OpenUI5? So let's check that out. So what is to be thought? So this is the OpenUI5 architecture where inside we have HTML5, CSS, and also the JavaScript. Now this JavaScript, uh, there is a de facto standard, which is nothing but the jQuery. Uh, it's the most famous uh, library built out of JavaScript as a programming language. And uh, yeah, so that is the library that been used also in OpenUI5. So SAP, what they did, they wrap around this OpenUI 5 and added certain more capabilities. For example, some analytic path in a framework, certain uh, charts, controls, exotic controls, smart controls, and they just, you know, created the SAP UI 5. So obviously the main thing is like the uh, licensing because, you know, OpenUI 5 comes under Apache 2.0 license as a free, you can use it. 
and also the content because SAP UI5, as I said, the different uh, controls and different libraries they have uh, put it on top of OpenUI5, which are not there in OpenUI5. Of course, it's only available in SAP UI5. And now, which one to choose? Of course, our recommendation should be SAP UI5 and not OpenUI5 when we are proposing a solution to our customer on SAP parlance because at the end, if there is any error happened, any issue happened, we cannot just rely on community to you know uh, step in and solve the problem. Rather, if we use SAP UI5 as a technology, uh, then it it would be we can reach out to SAP to you know get help on if something is not working as a core as a core functionality. So we understood the difference, I believe. So let's move on for the next thing. So next obvious question would be what is the difference between SAP UI5 and Fury? So SAP UI5 is a tool or kind of a library which been used as a technology to create the final application and an application you can call it as a fury provided it follows certain design language or design principle as the first one you can see it's a role based means the person or business user who will be dealing with the particular activities per day the application should you know confined with those controls minimalistic uh, information so that that person can focus on the work rather than you know defocused with lots of other information which he or she is not using it uh, day to day job uh, wise so that's the role based Second thing is the adaptive means any device uh, you want to use it be it phone or maybe desktop or tablet or iPad uh, application should be rendering it seamlessly. The third one is coherent means the application should be very intuitive. If you you know learn how to use one Fury application, uh, you, you don't need a separate user training uh, completely just to uh, make yourself uh, aligned with another Fury application because more controls and kind of an approach of handling the application should be very much seamless. So that is the third one. Fourth one is simple. Of course, simplicity is the important thing. Uh, application should be very simple in look and feel and you know navigation, etc. should be very much uh, intuitive and very much simple. Uh, so the last one is delightful. So that means it should give an emotional connection with the, app, uh, with the user and user should be happy using this application and it should not be a burden for them. Right. So that's when a particular application follows these all recent principles provided the backend technology is SAP UI5, right? Then only it is called the you know trademark name as a Fury. Obviously, this can be achieved with other technologies as well, but still it is not a Fury because that behind the uh, technology is may not be using SAP UI5. So make sure that uh, Fury comes on the picture when it's having those design principles followed by the technology all, all aligned. So let's now check out this one as well, like the difference between Fury and Fury elements. So this is come some sort of an SAP's low code or no code approach, and it's a template driven, and it's a CDS means code data service and annotations based. So SAP is saying like, hey, you don't need to bother about creating views and controllers, etc. Of course, uh, we haven't seen it yet. We'll we'll do we'll we'll develop the application. We'll get to know all those things. But for the timing, what you can imagine that you are not creating any views or something like that, but still SAP will, you know, parse the CDS annotations, which is attached maybe directly in the CDS layer or maybe some metadata extension layer. SAP will take those annotations, it will parse them and it will generate the UI uh, by following certain templates, right? And certain smart controls, as I said, it's primarily, it's uh, based out of smart controls, uh, reading out the annotations, it can render and generate the UI. So any above developers even can create a UI5 without knowing much of UI5 development, right? So, but the thing is all sort of uh, requirements probably not best fit with this uh, approach. If the application you want to develop is a bit customized and a bit complex, uh, never try with annotation uh, based or maybe some sort of an uh, a Fury elements based because you will get stuck with certain limitations later on, okay? so. Think through like where your application will get into finally. Play like sim simple kind of a reporting or something you want to achieve. Maybe the best way to develop it, right? So be sure what you are offering your customer as a solution. So all the controls that uh, we are just so far talked about controls is nothing but UI elements, right? But SAP is thinking through some other approach called web components. Okay, I don't want to confuse uh, with a lot of information in the first episode. We'll learn those all things in subsequent tutorials. So in the next episode, my plan is to set up the IDEs. Uh, we'll use Visual Studio Code, and uh, we'll you know uh, we can use Business Application Studio as well. And of course, we'll start with some Hello World UI web application to build. But that event will be very exciting, I believe. So stay tuned uh, with this uh, series, and we'll connect soon.